today, for Safety First, we're going to be talking about a kind of a scary situation. We're going to be talking about uh, canopy transfers. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Hello, Dave. It's going great. It's been an epic summer of travel. And oh, tra- oh, man, you just used my least favorite word. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I'll use another one. It's been a totally sweet, awesome, trick summer, yeah. <laughs> what, what all have you been up to? <laughs> Uh, well, we, we did a six-week tour of the whole family through Scandinavia, did a whole bunch of canopy flight courses all over Norway and Sweden and Denmark, and then uh, touring around the States now a bit. Where where are you at in the States? Um, well, I live in Maryland, um, but we uh, we haven't done anything nearby. So we uh, we were up in, I did a course in Maine, uh, last one up at Scott Ave, New England, one of my favorite drop zones in the world. Was that Tiki Boogie that you were just at? No, I, well, I try not to go to boogies well, if I can avoid it. A canopy course is not usually, uh, you know, com- compatible. Sure. Uh, but we had an interesting spin on this. Uh, I was at the ranch, um, the most recent course, and they said, sorry, you can't do any hop and pops. We have two otters running, and it would just create a hazard. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, I got an idea. We're going to change the format. We're going to go full altitude. We're going to do two ways. I'm going to break you guys up, and we'll rotate, and I'm going to jump with each of you before the end of the weekend, and we're going to work on whatever you want to work on, and then we're going to break off high and do our canopy training stuff, and it worked out really, really well. Cool. Do you see that as being a future format, or was that kind of a Band-Aid? I, well, it was an experiment that went really, really well, and quite frankly, I, it satisfied a need for me as well because if, if all I do is canopy flight courses, you know, I'm not going to altitude as much as I'd like to. Maybe I can sneak, you know, a two in in a weekend and yeah. go do a self indulgent wingsuit flight or something. But now I get to work on my skydiving. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, today um, we have a listener that wants us to talk about canopy transfers. Um, yeah. Uh, specifically, how the procedure works and when it's a good idea and when it's a bad idea. Yeah. Well, the first thing, of course, to say about the topic is if you need to do a canopy transfer in most cases you've already kind of screwed up you know you should be pulling high enough that if you've got a problem with your main canopy you should be able to cut it away and be under your reserve above 2,000 feet down there but it can happen where you get into a, a, a canopy collapse situation or a canopy collision um which sometimes are avoidable in most cases i think but um, it can happen, you know, where somebody spirals into you. And here you are with a main parachute that is not functioning. If you're well below cutaway altitude, uh, of course, some people will say, well, I have a sky hook. I can cut away lower. I say, well, no, you shouldn't because sky hooks should work. They usually do work. And sometimes uh, it doesn't function the way it was intended to function within an immediate deployment. So you really don't want to think of, of a sky hook as permission to cut away at a grand or lower. Um, so the whole idea is you're in trouble. You can't cut away the main, so now you're going to fire the reserve. If the main uh, is still attached and in a spin, there's a chance that it's not going to go very well, but here you are under a parachute that's not working anyway. So you might as well try something, get some fabric out. So you, you fire the reserve, and, of course, if you cut away before your reserve is actually inflating... Now you can simply fall into your your free bag or your lines, which would be hanging below you in a low-speed malfunction. So it's really important that if you're going to execute this very unusual procedure uh, of a canopy transfer, that you observe your reserve deployment and make your decision about when you're going to cut away based on the inflation stage of the reserve. And I would say, you know, let it inflate as much as possible if you can, uh, the cutaway can happen quite low, actually. Uh, if you're you know, simply waiting for this thing to, to uh, inflate, uh, you might as well stay attached to whatever you got would, so you see the slider start, start to come off the canopy. Would there be an instance where, where maybe you wouldn't want to do the second part of it? Like You would not want to cut the main away? Like, is, Are there situations well, where it's better, where more fabric is better even if it's not really doing much for you well it's if you're talking about uh you know where the reserve is really not inflating 
and the main is uh, possibly entangled with it where you could make things worse. Um, sure. You know, this is, we're talking about a, a real worst case scenario here, but it's possible. And so this is why I'd say, say, observe it and, and think it through as it's happening, which is not an easy thing to do. You know, everybody says stay cool in a crisis, but when you're actually in that crisis, uh, all you can maybe, maybe remember to do is to sort of slow down the acceleration of action that's natural to you, breathe a little and think it through and, and realize that you, you probably have more time than you think. And if you slow down in action and process, even that, that extra one or two seconds of, of observing, you might realize, oh, geez, if I cut away now, I'm going to create a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So for instance, what if you have a double-sided double RSL? So if you just fire your reserve and that you know, the, the reserve opens and now you've got you know, the possibility of, of the main parachute after you cut it away choking off your reserve. So you got to re actually release one or ideally both sides of the RSL under those circumstances. Um, Sh Shannon Pilcher was on the show a few episodes ago. And uh, he was talking uh, about in military courses that uh, he doesn't even really use a um, specific altitude for when it's no longer okay to cut away, to just go straight to the reserve instead. He basically says once you are, are in your pattern that he tells the guys that cutaway handles are then off limits. Um, because in, in his thought process, I believe... Uh, the idea was that even the act of checking altitude is taking time. And so once you're in the pattern, then the cutaway handle is, is off limits at that point. What, what do you think about that school of thought? Well, I mean, that's, we're talking about pretty low. I mean, I start my pattern at, uh, at 1,200 feet at the, the lowest, but uh, some people start their pattern quite a bit lower than that. So I don't know. I mean, if you're talking about jumping when we talk about you know spec ops and military applications where they don't necessarily know the altitude of the ground relative to their exit altitude and i've been there lots of times i was there in norway uh, not so long ago it was about a month and a half ago with a spinning mail and i could have fought it i've fought spinning mails and fixed them before lots of times but i chose to just fire that cutaway handle instantly because i knew i was over an 1800 foot mountain mm -hmm. Um, and so it was the right choice for me, but uh, I think the the main thing is to uh, to know where you are as much as you possibly can, and don't sort of dabble with uh, with a mal if there's any chance that you're over high terrain. Well, it's a scary thought to uh, to have to do a canopy transfer or, or to have to fire a reserve into a main. Uh, at all, and I think you kind of nailed it at the start that that maybe don't let yourself get to that position to begin with. Let, let's yep. uh, let, let's deal right. with malfunctions early. Yeah, and, and at the same time, uh, if we don't consider the worst con worst case scenarios, if we don't sit around and talk about them once in a while, then we're going to find ourselves off the map, so to speak, or we haven't thought it through. What if you have a pilot shooting tow? What if you have uh, an aircraft emergency? And you're living in this Pollyanna world where you're not scared if nothing goes wrong, everything's fine. But if something goes wrong, you want to have a plan. And, and I continue to hold that if you have thought it through and you have a plan, it's not really an emergency. It's just a change of plans. All right. Well, Brian, um, thank you very much. And uh, we'll, we'll talk to you on the next episode. Where can we keep up with you these days? What's, what's the most uh, current place to be uh, checking out what you're up to? Well, Adventure Wisdom and, of course, uh, Facebook is, uh, is a pretty good place to find me. I post stuff almost every day. Um, but Adventure Wisdom is kind of our, our primary hub now that we've got uh, the online uh, training videos that you can download or stream. We're able to reach out to a lot of people all over the world, and I'm really impressed. People are, are uh, getting a lot out of it, and they write letters that they actually have improved, which was the goal, not just to, you know, to get them to watch the video. I want to see improvement, and, and it's working. That's you can't great. learn how to fly your canopy from a video. That's great. Brian, we'll talk to you on the next episode. Yes, indeed. Be well, Dave. Happy See ya. Day. We're exploring. We're looking for turtles and other wildlife. We saw that beautiful bird.
There might be foxes, sure. <laughs> it's surprisingly challenging. Oh, don't let Matthew fall off. Yeah, our number one priority is to keep the children on the boats. And free fly training can happen. It's a secondary goal. Cool. He's like, ha ah. <laughs> Can I have it smoochy smooch, Matthew? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need a smoochy smooch. Yeah. Yeah. Until we get further. Ha <laughs> ha